Let me just contextualize this before we get into the, uh, into the detail and descend down to, uh, down to the ground. So this tile, uh, sorry, this screenshot is almost uh, illegal not to show when you're talking about, uh, oh, I need to turn this tweet. Oh, no, keep tweeting. I just keep <laughs> tweeting is really good. Keep tweeting, but no swearing. Um, you see this, this picture of the launch pad, the, the screenshot of the launch pad everywhere. And if you're like me, you think, those tiles look really, really cool. It's not just tiles to access applications. It's, it's stuff that you can actually see and act upon. It's like a green number there. Uh, we, um, we, OK, yep. Yeah. Um, there's a green number there, and we can, we can act on that. There's a KPI. We've got graphs. Um, uh, we've got graphs that we can look at and have a, at a glance uh, idea of what's going on in my organization or my running, for example. And you know, it's like, how do we do this? And what other sorts of things can we do with the technology that's, that's driving this? So that's, the, that's the, um, uh, the context. Hopefully, that's the context that you're expecting. So without further ado, let me hand over first of all, to John. And I've got John's slide, so I'm going to go away from this one, and I'm going to drive while John uh, talks us through. So over to you, John. Brilliant. Thank you very much, DJ, and thank you for that introduction as well. So as DJ said, I'll be covering off the, uh, what, an overview of the Fiori Launchpad, so a quick history and uh, features of it. So next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so, contents-wise, for this my bit. So, quickly, quick history uh, followed by uh, a list of the features, uh, how the uh, launch pad is organised, then some quick examples uh, followed by how responsive design fits into the equation, and then the deployment options that you've got for actually getting this up and running in your in your organisation. So, uh, first off the bat, we've got the history. So. Uh, SAP defines the Fiori Launchpad as the SAP Fiori Launchpad is a role-based, personalized UI client that enables users to access SAP Fiori apps side by side with established UIs. So what does that actually mean? Um, simply, it means that you can view your Fiori applications on a personalized website on any device that has a web browser, and all with a consistent user experience. So where did the Launchpad that we see today come from? It started back in 2013, almost three years ago to the month. Uh, in the form of the SAP Fiori launch page, uh, which contained a small number of core Fiori applications, and that brought about responsive design and the ability to view it on devices of all sizes, and the beginnings of the t also the beginnings of the tile concept, which is still in use today. It, it finally had a fairly limited number of deployment options and also a fairly small number of applications too. Mm. Uh, however, good start. Good start. Uh, <laughs> good start. Could do better. Uh, a for effort. Um, shortly after this, we moved on to uh, Fiori 1.0, which was an incremental update on the launch page, which continued uh, the sort of the UI, the theme of the tiles and the responsive design, and it improved the number of applications and just sort of generally improved it a bit. Then after that, not long after that though, in November 2013, we had uh, the Fiori launch pad was released, which brought with it um, quite a significant update, and that came with a similar UI, but a much more polished looking thing, and refinements to all of that good stuff. And also, more important, most importantly, it increased the uh, number of standard applications from 25 to just under 200, which is a really good thing. Uh, so the key features of the, the launch pad are personalization. So in this day and age, everyone expects to be able to adjust the, the tools that they use to their own, um, to meet their own needs. So the Launchpad lets users do just that, and they've got the option to build their own home pages full of all the content they need, which saves them time and increases productivity. It's also context aware, which means that it, it analyzes the state that it's currently in, and it also suggests to you, the user, uh, any relevant actions that would, would be of use to you, which is, of course, a great, great benefit. It's, it's fully customizable uh, via the theming and branding uh, toolkit. Which, doesn't, which we'll see later on, doesn't actually need any programming experience for that either, which is great. So it means you can make mm. it fit your, uh, your company's branding really, really easily. And uh, tile-wise, as you saw in one of DJ's screenshots earlier, it uses tiles as a, a way to organize the content. So there's three primary tile types, which I'll, uh, you can see there, but I'll go over the, those more in a bit. And content type, oh, sorry, what you can actually fit in content-wise. So we've got the tiles, what can you put in them? Um, it supports all sorts, really. You can, uh, you've got all the standard Fiori applications, all 200 of them, uh, bespoke UI5 applications, and you can also do DIMPRO, ABAP, uh, SAP Web GUI, and also SAP Screen Personas. 
as well as uh, plugging in Lemira reports and SAP Jam feeds, so there's quite a lot of options there. And of course, as I meant, mobile design's been really at the forefront for this. So it uses HTML5, which means it works on anything with a web browser, and it will size itself perfectly. Cool. I noticed you're also talking about tiles on tiles there, very meta, John. <laughs> I just noticed that. <laughs> Going around in circles. Um, yes, so how's that organized? Well, first off, authentication, which I think is the a key thing for most, or, for most organizations, is also how, how it's authenticated. Um, so it works across um, m m all backend systems, really. And it uses a role-based authentication system, which is easily configured and ensures that each user only has access to the relevant applications that are required for their daily work. Uh, the role system also allows for um, easily configurable default applications and layouts to ease the initial transition into the launch pad. So often the customization stuff by the, by the user isn't actually even necessary because the standard thing will be more than enough for them. But the option's there if they want it. Uh, next slide, please. So then tile groups. So rather than just flinging a load of tiles at your screen, um, you can organize those tiles into groups, which are which makes things a lot easier to navigate and understand. So much like your desktop, uh, the launch pad is a, set, is a collection of, of things which are important to you. And the tile groups mean that you can categorize those into nice, simple, uh, relevant groups. And also, it keeps it nice and easily scalable for uh, if you were to view it on a phone, say, instead of a computer. Uh, the groups are fully customizable. And you can also put any tile in as many groups as you want if, it, if you feel it fits into multiple categories. Next slide, please. Uh, so, uh, yep, so, then, so behind that, behind that home page, You've got the tile catalog. So this screen isn't personalizable, isn't, per, isn't customizable, um, and it contains every single application that you uh, or your user has access to. So that might include a lot of stuff that you don't actually necessarily need. So in here, you can look at what you want and then simply add it with a little one button click to your home screen, and that allows you to build up a nice uh, streamlined home screen for yourself. I think, I think it's also fair to say that you know, it's not just applications that these tiles oh, no, give no. access to. So you could have a you could have a, a catalogue of KPIs, for example. Yeah, absolutely, which yes. Come on to right. Yes, exactly. Yeah, some examples of those in the bit. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, probably should have said that. Yeah, it's not just application uh, shortcuts. It's the app. The app they don't have to be shortcuts to anything. They can just be charts, and as DJ says, KPIs. Uh, so that's yeah, perfect. So let's have a quick look at some examples. So as you can see here. Uh, at the top there, we've got some, uh, some nice, simple application, application launching tiles, which Ollie will cover off more in a bit. And then underneath that, we've got a, a feed, which can, doesn't actually do anything other than show you sort of relevant information, and it'll cycle through that. And then after that, we've got, uh, as you can, <laughs> what he just mentioned there, we've got a nice KPI tile, which shows you a chart of fairly concise information, which means that you don't actually necessarily need to even drill into the application. You can just see it at a high level. And likewise, at the bottom there, we've got more, uh, slightly more complicated charts. But that tile shows how, just how sort of to what levels you can customize the launch pad. As you can see, that's really looks a lot different to the what most people yeah. would consider the launch pad. So these these tiles at the bottom, the three tiles, two by two tiles, which which mm. Ollie's going to talk about a little bit later. But these were built by uh, one of our colleagues, Tiago, for example. Mm -hmm. And these are standard Fury launch pad tiles, just themed differently and um, built awesomely. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, absolutely. So, and then, as I mentioned earlier, it's also fully customizable with the theme designer. So this is actually it here. So you can just adjust all the colors <coughs> and everything else about it, logos, branding, whatever. And it doesn't need any programming, none of that. Just use this tool, and away you go. <laughs> none of that rubbish. Yeah, not, none of that <laughs> stuff. Who wants to do that? Um, <laughs> So yeah, and yeah, you can also uh, export stuff from there, so you can transfer it across to multiple systems without any sort of tedious copying and pasting or anything, that, anything like that, which is really cool and streamlined. Uh, next up, we've got so yep to demonstrate the responsive design. Um, as you can see on the right, we've got uh, a d the my launchpad on my my laptop screen, which is quite large, and then to the left of that, you've got it on my iPad, and then finally on the left of that, you've got it on my phone. As you can see, it shows the same information. And it remains consistent throughout, and yet it, it's resized itself to sort of fit the necessary mm -hmm. screen sizes, which I think is a key uh, or great thing that's happened in now because in the, past you, yeah, in the past you were limited to, say, using just a computer, but not anymore. Um, uh, finally, so deployment options. So how do you get this up and running for yourself? 
So the first option is the ABAP front-end server, which supports all the applications, and it also supports all the UI tech, which is uh, SAP UI 5, DIMM per ABAP, SAP GUI for HTML, screen personas, and all the different types of reports, so BEX Design Studio and all that lot, uh, and also URL navigation. It doesn't support iView, however, and it does, does though, support all SSO options, which is great if you're in IT. And it, it's deployed on ABAP, and it can be deployed either on-premise or via HANA Enterprise Cloud. So next slide. And then we've got the uh, SAP Enterprise Portal, which uh, supports a substantially reduced subset of applications. But it does su support all the UI technology, which means you could add in bespoke applications easily enough. And it also supports all the SSO options as well. Again, much like the ABAP front-end server, that runs on ABAP and, again, is deployed either on-premise or via HANA Enterprise Cloud, which is great. And then, finally, we've got the HANA Cloud Platform, which is all shiny, new, and modern. Um, and this one supports all the applications and all the uh, UI technology as well, but it doesn't support iView, which, uh, much like the ABAP front-end server, it also doesn't support all the SSO options. Uh, it, doesn't, it does all of them apart from SAP logon tickets. Uh, it's deployed on Java rather than ABAP, and it can be deployed on the cloud only. There are no on-premise options. Um, one yep. closing the word cloud there, I guess. Closing the word cloud, absolutely. <laughs> on-premise cloud. Um, <laughs> everyone's favourite. Uh, one, <laughs> one, one new option for the cloud deployment is the uh, SAP Fiori Cloud Edition, which comes with a limited number of SAP Fiori apps, uh, which cross sort of the most commonly used apps and use cases. And it also comes with the ability to uh, Make your own apps and customize those. So it's sort of a really good way to test your uh, put your feet in the waters of Fiori, and it all and theming and branding support. So yeah, Fiori Cloud option. Awesome, great stuff. Awesome.